So I will present on the work that we carried out in 2021 and 2022. So some of the results might be outdated, but I think for the large majority and from what I heard from Oksana's work uh, on Kobates' work, it seems that the findings are still uh, relevant. So we did a mapping of diagnostics for self-testing for HIV and uh, he viral hepatitis C. So what we try, the reason why we do this is that we want to increase, uh, according to our long-term strategy, the use uh, of affordable, timely, and quality testing tool in community settings. And as the ATG, we try to facilitate the cross-country learning um, and also community research and advocacy with different uh, stakeholders, be them uh, uh, European level, national level, and um, industry. So in 2021, we did a survey on HIV and HCV self-testing kits, pricing about the availability as well as practical tool and solution. Um, we had done that also because like WHO had updated uh, the, the, the guidelines, there were some tools for hepatitis testing, that self-testing that were coming to the fore. So we carried out an online survey via Google form. We received input and review into the survey by EATG members, several of which are also COBA test members. Um, we did a, launch a survey in English and in Russian language uh, to potential survey participants. The data collection happened in July, from July to September 21, 70 respondents. Uh, 48 answer, uh, 47 answered in English, 23 in Russian language, um, and for, they came from 37 countries. The vast majority uh, were affiliated with local organization. There were, in some countries, there were two or more responses. There were some discrepancy in reporting for some countries. So overall, just which also reflects what uh, Oksana presented. Uh, this is based on the community perceived uh, bar like barriers regarding pricing availability challenges and solution. So in, in many countries, there were no availability of self-testing kits for HIV and HCV, a partial availability, a full availability, or they were, um, in some countries, we didn't get any, any input. But so this is to give you a snapshot of the availability that there's still some work to be done to expand it. Um, as, as here you see, the, ver the funding varies uh, quite a lot between countries, but uh, notably it's the funding comes from international donors and private donors or from NGOs, which presumably get it from international or private donors as well. So there's quite a bit of work to, or <clears throat> to be done to expand public funding for self-testing programs at community at community level. So the we we categorize the findings in three levels. So community uh, level factors uh, it, like influencing uptake or not of self-testing, administrative factors, that's a more state or system level, and industry-related factors. Uh, not surprisingly, cost came to the top, <laughs> was one of the top ones. Um, there's also the issue of stigma, lack of awareness, lack of promotion to the general public, poor knowledge of the option, perception that medical professionals didn't see self-testing as an option. Um, then at, at, um, at administrative level. Uh, in many places, HIV testing can only take place in clinical settings. Oral swabs are more expensive than fingerprinting. That was for the um, aura, for sure. There were also strict uh, regulation and protocols around voluntary testing and counseling. There is no HIV, uh, viral hepatitis C testing policy available. Um, in some cases, it's also there's unclarity around the legal frameworks for uh, self-testing or it's not uh, implemented. There's also uh, some HCV self-test kits lack EC marking, which means they're not available. And uh, the expansion is, uh, is dependent on political will and uh, distribution. There's a lack of, as I meant, uh, lack of uh, local framework for monitoring um, uh, reactive results, referrals, and so on. There's lack of investment in the infrastructures. Uh, then HIV self-testing may be available during pilots, but then what happens afterwards? Um, yeah, and sorry. 
but uh, but local political will could respond to self-testing advocacy um and there's also a bit of bureaucracy and old ways of thinking and at at the industry level <clears throat> profit uh seeking was one of the the factors identified the perceived lack of demand that's something that we often get from industry so they say there's no demand um and they say okay the price is up because it's a small market or it's not interesting to market in that country and then there's an unclear regulation so we did a based on this survey we did a then did a, a qualitative survey and so we looked at the results uh, from the from the survey and we looked into more in-depth research in countries where access was more challenging so we looked at Armenia and where there was less data because on some countries there's a lot of data and other countries there's just literally no data. So we looked at Armenia, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Poland, Slovenia and the Russian Federation. So the way we did it, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, we use this definition in the qualitative. So we made sure when we did the interviews that we always uh, refer to this definition from WHO. Um, it was take the it happened between October and November 21 and um, we use key informant in the in the following uh in following countries we carried out uh, online semi-structured interviews in Russian and English with the use of developed guide all interviews were sorry all interviews were analyzed uh, anonymously and uh, participants provided their informed consent so seven countries 18 interviews for one hour there were some research limitation um, just because of time i'm not going to go through it and but the, the presentation will be available so it's not a really large sample but it gives indication so here were the results which kind of reflect the results sorry but go into more depth so there was a lack of a legal framework for hiv and hcv testing uh, or mm, poor implementation in practice uh so at the information there was also a barrier like there is little information provided uh and here perhaps based on the 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 interviews but also then the the workshop that we had in december 21 uh digital tools could be could be a helpful uh response to the lack of uh, to support palliating the lack of information there were also issues around stigma and confidentiality uh, around buying. And this is also why maybe in some cases, online purchasing is um, more acceptable to some because going to a pharmacy in a context where it's really discriminated. This was also said, for instance, in the case of um, Bosnia, it was specifically hi highlighted. There's the issue of funding, the, the impact of, um, of COVID, the, the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, and the, it depends also on the social and political uh, situation in the country. So the, one of the barriers uh, that key informants reported was an impossible inaccurate interpretation of self-testing by a respondent, the lack of promotion of self-testing among key population, the mistrust and lack of knowledge among local authorities and healthcare professional, and um, also the lack of knowledge around HIV and HCV and sexual health in general among the general population. Digital tools like website, hotlines, QR codes with links to the video for self-testing could be, could be of use. Stigma and confidentiality. So there is a high level of stigmatization in society and also among health workers in particular. There is some normalization going in Central and Southeastern Europe, but still there's a high levels of, uh, of stigma. And <clears throat> there was also a perception that HIV related stigma was more complicated and um, more enduring. Sorry. And then uh, there were also different key population, which we, we categorize it like people who use drugs, sex workers, migrants, um, uh, transgender or gender diverse people, MSM, uh, people in detention experience different levels of, uh, of stigma or different types of stigma at times. Hmm. There's also some uh, stigma around like sexual health issues and sexual relations. And 
So we self-testing could be a method to overcome stigma or to address uh, stigma. Funding, um, yeah, the, the funding, because people don't necessarily have the funding to purchase self-testing. So it strongly affects the, 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 the results. This was also, Oksana also highlighted that. Um, there's also at government level, <clears throat> whether if there's easy access to treatment, the whether the government is funding community organization testing programs where they they deliver uh, testing kits uh, free of charge. Sorry, and then uh, yeah, it's the available easily available kits and uh, affordable for the people using it, or or free. Uh, there were dual impact uh, of the, the COVID. On the one hand, it showed that self-testing was feasible and acceptable, and it's, but then it also had negative impact on testing, but, but it was used to, to, to implement, uh, the situation was used to implement or expand self-testing program. So the, the social and political uh, background in the country influences uh, the, the, the expansion. So in terms of recommendation, based on the, the survey, the workshop that we had and the, um, and the qualitative research, uh, we, we need to advocate for the development and implementation of policy that regulates self-testing. Um, and maybe work on the policy gap analysis. For instance, we noted that there is not a lot of like cost effectiveness research <clears throat> On this, whereas in like on, for instance, on the African continent, there is much more research around cost effectiveness. So that's maybe some areas. This and they could be used for advocacy, uh, but also that self testing should be integrated into the strategies, testing strategies with government funding, which is a uh, kicking an open door. But they should also be dialogue with the manufacturers and suppliers for the price reduction. Uh, we also need to increase awareness raising among key population, but also official self uh, healthcare providers, um, and increasing public awareness around sexual health. Mm -hmm. And we need to reduce stigma and discrimination as usual. Um, use like work with the, the digital tools uh, as a support for self testing. Um, and use best practices in the introduction of digital health technologies and remote services mm -hmm. uh, and exchange. So this is why this meeting is quite useful for, for this. And um, so this is it. Thank you. I look forward to hear the other two projects. And I just wanted to acknowledge the, a few people. So Sarah uh, North, uh, Anna Tokar, Anna Prova, uh, Konstantin Lezenchev, EATG members um, and the funders for, for, this, uh, for this work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.